Perfect Days is not a typical crowd-pleasing film as it's reminiscent of Yasujiro Ozu's work. It initially threw me off that the film was a square picture as I thought there is a setting on my TV or app that caused the 4x3 aspect ratio. Nope, it was intended to be an homage. Again, if you're here watching this video, you probably wanted to hear a take on Perfect Days. There are probably going to be spoilers, but this isn't a conflict-driven film. This guy, Hirayama, takes immense pride in his work in maintaining the cleanliness and supplies of Japanese public restrooms in Tokyo. He's 50-something years old and we don't know a lot about his past initially. We observe him going to work and living his life almost routinely and ritualistically. It's refreshing to watch a film that's a literal slice of life. Life is full of boring moments, however, there is some value or something to be grateful for in those little moments that may seem insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Life is not one highlight reel after another that you see online or one hopefully thrilling conflict after another in films and television. I enjoyed that there are a lot of gaps to fill with why Hirayama lives his life in this way. The simple answer is that he just lives a life that is agreeable to him. It's not what we would envision a 50-something year old man would be doing. There is unfortunately a certain stigma with these types of jobs if older people in society are working them. We may think what went wrong, but I believe this shows that one can find beauty in the simplicity of living. We learn that Hirayama has a sister whose daughter ran away from home to visit him. The daughter, Nico, firmly rejects the life that her mother provides as there's something that attracts her her to Hirayama's lifestyle. She says that she doesn't want to become like her immediate family. She even has her own film camera and ends up helping him clean the public restrooms. Being a diligent restroom cleaner isn't necessarily a dream job, so Hirayama's life choices don't make sense to most others. Men in Japan are expected to become office salary men. It's a little surprising that he's in his 50s and he's doing this type of work. Is it so crazy? To be taking it easy with a job like that where you have to clean public restrooms. But the restrooms are actually cool looking and not full of needles and shit. They're in beautiful places and thoughtfully designed in Japan. It doesn't appear that Hirayama is living a true reality. He doesn't want to visit his ailing father and he only wants to stay in his idyllic simple life. On the other hand, maybe his father wasn't kind to him or there is something that's stopping him from becoming integrated into his family again. Maybe he feels more stability being alone and away from his family. You don't get to choose your family, but you can get close to choosing one of your own volition, and they can feel closer than actual blood relatives. Hirayama is whimsical as he plays with shadows with a man with terminal cancer. That man asked if you combined two shadows, would it create a darker shadow? Hirayama proceeded to combine his shadow with this man and then ends up playing shadow tag with him. This was addressing a question that this dying man had as there's a lot of knowledge out there that we don't even know about before we die. Also it was to address that we all should just enjoy the moment and not dwell too much on the future. It's a silly question that most people wouldn't even try to literally answer, but Hirayama has a will to live authentically and in the present. He doesn't find it too late to live life. Maybe the way his life is now is what he believes is actually living. I empathized with Hirayama as I admired his work ethic despite his occupation. Takashi reflected an attitude of why should he work hard at a job that he doesn't like or believe that it's worthwhile. I understand Takashi in the sense of, yes, if you don't like your job, then it's unlikely that you would give it your all, as he was doing the bare minimum, if that. I'm not sure if Hirayama truly likes his job, but I think he at least appreciates the environment that it provides. 
He doesn't have to stress out too much, and he gets to enjoy and photograph nature. The song choices are central to the film, and they play out as if we're hearing them out of his sound system, either at home or in his car. It's reminiscent of how some people drive to work and listen to their music. At the end, where he shifts from being happy to sad and back and forth again, I felt that. I mean, if you've never been on the verge of tears or just started crying while driving, have you been through it yet? I mean, if you haven't, I think that's great. It's possible that the music could be affecting his mood after the events that transpired. He met a local barkeeper's ex-husband who had cancer and tried to play shadow tag with him while addressing the gift of life despite how fragile it is. I find perfect days to be about nothing really other than authentically living life how one sees fit. There's not much of a plot or story. There's a lot of gaps to fill. But maybe there aren't any gaps to fill. The more things you have in your life, the more you have to lose and deal with. The less that you have, the less complicated and difficult your life is. I'm not saying that being completely destitute would be worry-free. What I mean is having very few things or minimizing your lifestyle might be less stressful than having a mountain full of things. If you live within your means, you probably won't be frustrated by the complications of having more. Living simply means dealing with fewer things. It also means you get to appreciate things for the way they are instead of trying to fix things or make things better. It all depends on how one lives their life. Mm -hmm.